I'm going to show you how to create this beautiful tropical shore scene from building the landscape, adding a small house and creating crystal clear water. We go through it step by step. Let's dive in. First thing I always do when starting a new scene is gathering references. I went into Google and Pinterest and searched for images of tropical houses, vegetation, lighting, water and so on. In the software PureF, where I organize all my reference images, I exported the PNG file and opened it in Blender in the image editor. Next, I start building the terrain. I use a simple plane and scale it up by 50 times. Then I apply the scale and we have a good starting point. From here, I jump into sculpting mode and turn on dynamic topology, which allows me to sculpt more freely and add detail to the landscape. For my beach area, I use two specific reference images that inspired the shape and the flow of the land. To create small hills and bumps, I use the grab tool. You can adjust the size of the brush by pressing F and dragging your mouse. Later I decide to add some cliffs to the scene. I went into editing mode, selected the faces I wanted to turn into cliffs and pressed E to extrude them. You can keep extruding and shaping the landscape until you're happy with how it looks. In addition to the landscape, I also created a small tropical vacation house to place into scene. I highly recommend checking out Blender Guru's tutorial on building a house if you want a great guide on that. Once my house was ready, I placed it in the scene, making sure it fits the tropical vibe I was going for. For that beautiful tropical water, we need a more complex shader because we want the water to look crystal clear and as real as possible. I used the cube and scaled it along the X and Y axis by pressing S and then Shift and C till it covers my scene. I also added 100 subdivisions and applied the scale. To give the water some 3D waves, I added a subdivision surface modifier and set it to two. Then I added an additional displacement modifier. For the displacement texture, I choose the clouds template, which comes with Blender. In the cloud settings tab, you can control the size and the shape of your waves. The height can be adjusted with the displacement modifier. For the material, we are going to use a few key shaders. Add them all into your material and connect them with each other like shown. Then connect that shader with the volume input and the mix shader with the surface input. And there you go, the basic setup is done. From this point, it's just a matter of tweaking settings and adjusting the color to fit your scene. You can control the clarity of your ocean by using the volume absorption node. The more absorption you add, the darker the water will appear. I placed the ocean in my scene and went on with texturing. I used the PBR sand texture and mixed it with the rock texture. To give my sand and rock a better look, you can increase the bump or displacement value. I separate them with a normal and XYZ node. The rock texture can then be used as a guide to add meshes into my scene, placing them where the rock appears. For all these non-aesthetic cliffs, you can use the same technique. To give the scene more depth, I put bigger cliffs assets in the background, creating the illusion that there is more behind my wall of trees. Most of my assets were from Quixel Megascans and personally I like to make a few adjustments to improve the appearance. For example, I added a subdivision modifier to the mesh, increased the roughness value to the maximum and lowered the specular value to nearly zero. I also adjusted the displacement node to get the right look. Just experiment to see what works best. But don't forget to apply the scale before tweaking the values. As an alternative, you can plug the displacement texture into a bump node and connect it to the normal input. In my case, I combined both methods. Once I'm done placing the assets, I move on to the vegetation. I pre-created a biome using GeoScatter based on my reference images. In a separate plant file, I combined various plants like palms, large tropical trees, smaller trees, shrubs, bushes and grasses. To make all the plants match, I made some corrections in the shaders. Mainly the contrast, hue and saturations were adjusted. 
Big thanks to Aaron Westwood for his support in this part. In GeoScatter, I used elevation settings to control the scattering. Higher up are the trees and shrubs, and as it gets closer to the water, only grass is visible. This creates a natural transition from the forest to the beach. I was able to export this biome and insert it into my scene. In the end, I just had to make a few adjustments to the distribution of the grasses and bushes. But overall, this method worked great. For the background, as almost always, I imported a plane as an image and aligned it to the light coming from the sun. My lighting consists of only an HDRI, which I took from Polyheaven. Finally, I finished the scene with a few added assets, mainly in the foreground. And we're done. Rendered the scene, did a few corrections in Photoshop, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and can use a few things for yourself. If you have any ideas on further videos, feel free to post them in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.